I've worked with companies on and off for 20 years, uh, evolving change programs, helping them deliver change. And people often ask me, why doesn't change work? What stops it working? And the reasons are many, but I think they all boil down to probably one paradox that we're all party to, we're all human beings in this room, unless some aliens have come in and it. And that paradox is that, on the one hand, human beings are extraordinarily flexible. You think of what we can eat, where we can live, the conditions we can survive in. It's amazing. And yet, on the other hand, get over that? How do we get over the whole notion of being resistant or compliant, agents or victim? Anyone being called at the change agent? No. I to be a change agent. Sounds a bit like James Bond, doesn't it? Hey, I'm a change agent. I certainly wouldn't want to be called a change victim. So what makes us an agent of change, a catalyst of change, something that can enable change to happen, and change for the good, or what tips us into the, the bucket of victim. So how do we bring about change from a sense of choice within an organisation? It's all very fine and dandy. Understanding that at some point, if I'm going to embrace change that's pushed upon me, I need to find some way of owning it, some choice within the apparent no-choice situation. How on earth are you going to involve the people in your care to bring about change, if they don't want it. One of the difficulties about bringing about change in a corporate situation is that if you're part of the leadership team that can see the reasons for doing it, you're at a massive advantage. How many times have you been part of a management team where change has been talked about, and you kick it around for what? For days, for weeks, for months sometimes? You argue? You don't just get to consensus. <laughs> If you do, will you let me know? I'd love to come and teach you. It doesn't happen that quickly. You have to go through a whole process of negotiation and listening with the So how do you get that basic awareness? How is it achieved? It's only if awareness is raised to a certain level will you get people wanting to be responsive, wanting to take ownership. I talked about the feelings earlier of the chip wrappers. Do I blame? Do I pick them up? I'm being attacked. Do I find a way out or do I become a victim? There are always choices with there be no choice situation but a choice. But on mass, if you're trying to get people to do things they haven't thought of, you need to guide them. From awareness through to responsibility to ownership and then on to accountability. There are so many vision statements around now that say we strive to be the market leader, we're very, very lovely with our customers and everything's wonderful. At the very best, that's a strap line, it's a positioning statement. It's probably a statement of intent. It could be a purpose statement. NASA has a purpose statement. To explore the universe for the benefit of mankind. Interesting. Emotionally loaded. Benefit of mankind. Non-specific. Doesn't mention rockets. No time bound goes on forever. And what they failed to do, NASA, almost, which nearly got the plug pulled, is they kept putting men on the moon. And as a kid, I kept watching men, oh, another man on the moon. Saturday morning, black and white, telling oh, another man on the moon. What they didn't do is when the vision was achieved, come up with another vision, another point on the horizon. And in corporate terms, it's usually between three and five years. And so that five stage process well, at the beginning end, often take a lot longer than senior managers like. It can take four or five months to get engaged and get involved. But the implementation will probably take as long as it would have done if it had done it yourself, but it will take far more route. It will enter what I call their muscle memory, because they'll have been doing this on themselves by choice for a period of months, such that it becomes the new norm. They don't have to bash them over the head anymore. I'd like you to think about the choices you make, whether you're on automatic, listening to that voice inside your head, and then know that you've got choice, you don't have to react to it.